Sadhguru, I feel um, that there's a very fine line between being trustful and being naive. Um, <laughs> how can I uh, manage this? <laughs> Which one are you? <laughs> Right now, <clears throat> you know, a month ago I was in Hyderabad. After I spoke in one of the meetings, the local, local newspaper next day reported, Sadhguru denies God. Headlines, <laughs> they put. <laughs> the heading of the article was Sadhguru denies God or something like this. And it went on to describe how I deny God. Why this thing's happening is simply because instead of, instead of using your naivite, I'm constantly trying to help you to be doubtful about everything. Because I'm telling people, anyway you have a doubt about everything, you don't trust anybody in your life, please see this. You don't really trust anybody in your life. Even people with whom you have lived for ten years, twenty years, if they do one act, that you cannot understand, immediately all kinds of suspicion will arise about them, isn't it? Yes or no? If they do just one thing that you cannot understand, any number of suspicions will come in your mind. A guru is always a suspect. <laughs> so naturally there are more suspicions about him than anybody else. Unfortunately, that's the reality. That is why the possibility which is so close is so far away. <laughs> so I'm not asking you to be trustful, I'm always asking you to doubt. Doubt is fine with me, but suspicion is a sickness. Doubt means you're looking as to what is the truth. Suspicion means you made a conclusion about it. Doubt means you don't know, you're looking. That is a good state to be, you're looking constantly. Naive means you're suspicious and constantly wondering, is the other person much smarter than me? and still taking me for a ride in spite of all my suspicions, these people think they are naive, they are actually suspicious. But they are constantly wondering that the other person may be so much smarter than them and still taking them for a ride. Isn't it so? There is no really naive person in the world. They are suspicious people who are dumb. <laughs> Dumb and suspicious. Suspicion is not intelligence. In fact, the lower the level of your intelligence, more suspicious you are in your nature. Somebody who is intelligent naturally trusts people around him, at least in the day-to-day -day affairs. People who have a small mind are suspicious about everybody around them. Have you noticed this? The less intelligent they are, the more suspicious they are always. Because they can't see, figure out one thing from the other, they're constantly afraid that somebody will misuse them. They're constantly fear that somebody is going to take them for a ride. So they will be very suspicious, but they're clueless. So 
they call themselves naive. They're not naive, they're suspicious but with the brains of a caterpillar. <laughs> now, how do… the question is, how do I know whether I'm being taken for a ride or not? Let's come directly to it <laughs> isn't it? That's a question, isn't it? <clears throat> Let me tell you, you are being taken for a ride. because you are still not yet in that stage where I can either expose or impose or even tell you what it is about. It is like, I don't know if you have seen but you come from a Asian family, you might have seen. In India especially, mothers have a whole technology as to how to stuff the child with more food than you would normally eat, you know <laughs> You know this <laughs> technology? <laughs> now, <laughs> they will take so much rice and whatever in the plate. The child says, no, this is too much, I am not going to eat that. So, okay, you eat one half of it. This half, as the child begins to eat, they'll mix everything together again. Let's say the child is eating half of this half, then they'll mix this thing together and then again make it… child says, no, it's too much, so again make it half. Okay, okay, only half I'll give you, again make it half. Like this they will go on doing and in the end, Showing kakama, guvama, chandamama, this one, that one, you know, all kinds of distractions. And unknowingly the child will eat up the whole plate full of rice. Definitely the mother is taking the child for a ride, isn't it? Yes? Similarly, the guru is also constantly taking his disciples or devotees for a ride because if you really tell them what they are supposed to swallow, they will just say this is impossible and they will run away. So because you like everything in installments, <laughs> I'm taking you for a ride in installments but it will never happen in installments. It is whole or nothing. But your willingness comes in installments. Do you see, the first day you arrived at the introductory, what level of willingness you were and today what level of willingness you are, slowly we have taken you for a ride, isn't it? Making you little more willing, little more willing, little more willing. The way I am talking to you today, if I had spoken to you on that day, you would have left, never to see my face again. Isn't it so? So we are taking you for a ride 